So with the butternut squash, it is a very hard root vegetable. Very hard root vegetable. And I like to peel mine. There's a few different methods you can use. Like you can um, drop this in hot water and try to boil the skin off, boil it whole. Um, you can bake it and bake the skin off. Um, but of course, if you're baking it, like it changes the texture, like everything that you do to food changes the texture. If you're gonna boil it, it's gonna be more like a boiled pumpkin. You know, if you're going to bake it, it's gonna be more like a potato texture. The skin, when you bake it, if you bake it long enough, which you should, because it takes at least an, about an hour to cook, depending on your oven. Um, but if you bake it long enough, you can actually eat the skin. I've actually tasted it before. It's not a, it's not too weird. Inside of the butternut squash looks like that. Once again, making butternut squash soup. I'm doing a brioche crouton. Um, I'm also going to do some fried basil, a little bit of walnut oil right on top. You know, if you've ever seen like butter on top of your grits, butter on top of your potatoes, it's a little bit of oil, right? Sitting on top of, of the, uh, the soup. And then I'm gonna put some brie cheese in there and some heavy cream. So that's what I'm making today. Something random. I'm gonna go ahead and take these seeds out. Take the seeds out of the butternut squash. Of course, when you get to the ends, you can use a knife to cut that out. Got a pot of boiling water behind me with some oil and some salt in it, some olive oil and salt. And you wanna get rid of all of these seeds. Now, some people, they like to, you know, go ahead and uh, put them in the oven and roast them off and eat them. And you can, you can do that. That's, that's completely up to you. I'm not, a, I'm not really a seeds person. I don't really do seeds. I like sunflower seeds, but I don't really like going through the hassle of having to uh, shell them, you know? Same thing with pistachios. I like them, but I don't like to go through the hassle of having to shell them. Once you do that, then you wanna take them and you wanna cut your butternut squash. I like to cut them in cubes. So you wanna first cut it to look like this. Okay, they're gonna be odd shapes because once you take those seeds out, you're gonna have a hook on a few of them. Kind of a curved um, root vegetable. So these can be about a one inch, a one inch block uh, cube. They don't have to be perfect, but you're looking for something like that. And the water behind me that I have boiling has olive oil in it and salt. A fine, um, fine sea salt, olive oil and sea salt. And you can use whatever oil you have in your home. You can use whatever, um, whatever oil or whatever salt you wanna use. Like sometimes I use Himalayan, sometimes I use black truffle. It really depends on what I'm in the mood for. So I'm gonna go drop this in the water and I'll be right back. All right, next up, I got some sliced market side brioche bread. Those are all Walmart brands. Those are all Walmart brands. Okay, I just wanna cut these once again into cubes here. Just like that. Then I want to put them into a bowl. Put it into a bowl. Choose some fresh, fresh parsley. This is curly parsley. 
Um, I like curly. I prefer it over flat leaf. Um, flat leaf looks almost just like cilantro. So you can, that's how you can kind of tell the difference between it. Now, easiest way to cut the parsley. You want to line the parsley up. Kind of bunch them up like a tree. Get them as close together as you can. So that way you have more of the bush on the top and the stem at the bottom. Hold it, take the back of your blade, hold it, and then slice it off. And you should end up with basically barely anything on the stem, okay? Now you can go back through these and you can individually pick off whatever is remaining, um, if it's a, especially if it's a large stem. These make great for stock. You can take some thyme, some celery, which I always pretty much have. Got some celery right now. Take some parsley, some onions, and you put it inside of a pot of boiling water. Um, like we have our butternut squash in, and it will flavor that water, it will make its own stock. Like if I was to put all that in there with the butternut squash, it's gonna make a vegetable stock. Um, and then I can ladle from that, like I did the gumbo, and I can actually use that to make my soups. Not really into a whole lot of meat, but I do eat, I prefer seafood though. And I was pescatarian for a while. Yeah, I love it. This is handy dandy misto sprayer. I love this thing. Just pop this cap off. Take out the inside, the syringe. Slide that right there. Take the oil, pour it in. Okay, you wanna take that syringe and put it back. And you wanna make sure you got a really good seal. You can find these at uh, Kroger, um, Publix, Sam's, Costco, I think you can sell them. I think I even seen them at Dollar General. So, that being said, get you a misto sprayer. It allows you to proportion your um, your oil, portion out your oil properly, um, if you don't wanna use a whole lot. I like to saturate my brioche though. I'm completely opposite. I like to make sure I got a lot of oil on my brioche. This is like the only bread that I really eat. Um, I do like a good sourdough, especially made by Colombo. It's a California brand, gotta love it. So you wanna put a lot of oil in there. You wanna make sure you spray off into any gaps. Okay. I'm gonna put some of my seasoning in here. It's called Hella Seasoned. Get you some. I'm gonna start raffling this off. Just giving some of these bottles away. It's a Cajun Mexican seasoning, only has 5% salt in it. it. Has several spices in it. I'm gonna put that all that parsley in there with your bread, which will be croutons. Take a fork. Just move that around. I'm gonna give it one more spray. You want that parsley basically to stick onto the bread. So overly saturating it, one, it's gonna cook quicker, um, which is what you want, because you want them to be like crispy on the outside but soft in the middle. So if you put enough oil on them, that's what they'll do. Um, you can also put cheese in, in this. And if you put cheese in it, it will, it will basically bake onto the croutons. When they come out, they'll be like cheddar croutons or whatever, whatever cheese you're using. I'm putting cheese in the soup, so yeah, no.
no double cheese action, but I do have some brie, some brie cheese. So you want them to look like that. Really, really green, really green. You wanna get you a pan, handy dandy pan. Now, you can spray it a little bit. A little bit of Baker's Joy. Drop the fruitsons on there. And I like to take up one of these and you can use the rubber spatula, but you can also use the bread and scrape all that extra parsley out because it is about a tablespoon worth, which is a lot. Dump all that out. Spread these kind of evenly. We're gonna pop these in the oven on 375 for about eight to 10 minutes. Then you wanna take them and you want to go in this direction, rotating them. You want them to be as small as you possibly can. I am going to put these in there basically raw. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm going to blanch these and that process is basically to drop them in hot water, hot boiling water. Since we have our butternut squash already in boiling water, I'm gonna drop them in there before I pull the butternut squash. That's gonna allow these to tenderize a little bit. It's also gonna knock out some of that heat. And then once I strain it, then I'll end up blending it all together. And there'll be little specks of habanero throughout the dish. You can, this like, I know you can't smell it, but they smell kind of sweet, but you can definitely smell the heat. So once you get the brie open, you'll see it's in a, in a circle. You wanna carefully pull that paper up because the paper looks just like the rind. Okay, now the rind is 100% edible. It's a little furry, it's a very, um, different type of texture paper. Now, you can slice the rind off. And you wanna get it as whole as you possibly can Sometimes the rind intertwines with the cheese and is like off in there, you know. So you want to get as many large pieces of rind off. Okay. And then you can, you actually can just dig this out. Um, the, the quickest way. Take a spoon and literally, you're basically trying to get it separated from the, the bottom half of the rind. Okay, so you end up with a Big hunk of, of brie cheese ball right there. All right, I'm gonna use all that. And you just wanna open it. Damn, a lot easier than um, struggling, right? Once you get all the cloves out, you can uh, cut off that little end piece, hold the knife right there, and you're going to wiggle it back and forth. 
pop it right out. In it with a whole piece. Number one thing people hate to do is chop onions, chop garlic because they got one onion struggle with the crying, the whole tear thing, and then two, uh, garlic getting it out of its peel is so annoying, right? So how do we find different ways where we can be more efficient in the kitchen? This is one thing I like to do. Now these, some of these garlic are like slightly green. It's like they're, um, they weren't ripened or something when they were picked all the way. But I kind of like them like that. They're not as pungent. I bought these from Sam's. Now, I like to eat garlic whole, but I like to roast it in like butter and do all sorts of stuff to it. You can either mince it or you can leave it whole. One thing I'm doing is scalding the bottom of the, um, the pot by spraying water in the sink and instead of inside of the pot itself. And that will cool it down. Leaving them on the stove, what it will do is it will kind of sear them and it will also take out all of the liquid. They're not going to be dry, but they're not going to have like a half a cup of water in them either in your um, butternut squash pieces. The skillet, pop these garlic in here. Spray it with a little oil. Top it with some croutons. And of course, for picture taking purposes, you want to try to make the stuff float and sit right on top. So I like to use the croutons as a stabilizer, as a base so that when I'm putting it on there, it doesn't fall all the way in, but just enough. With the basil, I wanna kinda play on that too. And I want it to stick out of the soup. You guys will learn all of this when you start taking pictures. And voila, there we have our butternut squash soup filled with brie and habanero peppers topped with walnut oil and some fresh brioche croutons, some garlic. Yes, gonna whip it up. What you got going on?